in this video, I'll take a look at the twin. Now, this lift is so good. I mean, why did no one think of this earlier? Is this such a logical design? Well, this is perhaps the one that got around to inventing it, and it's just so good. It's two separately running lifts in the shaft. They've got two to one cabling, so a lower car's cables go round the upper cars, and they're independently working. It's not a double deck lift, these are two independently running lifts. And it's just such a clever system because building space this costs so much and need as little space to use as possible for lifts it's like why didn't no one invent this earlier it's just such a good idea so these lifts obviously have to use destination dispatch because you could just not run it with buttons in the lifts because the whole point of this is for people to get people through buildings as quick as possible so the system decides which users go to which lifts it just works perfectly. Now, I don't think much of lift gimmicks because there's a lot of gimmicks in lifts, such as Otis Gen 2 belt cables. What a fucking load of shit. But there's also other things which people like to go on about, like a Fist and Crap Multi, which I'm not sure about because Fist and Crap don't exactly have a good track record when it comes to weird lifts. They love making weird signs of lifts, but they're never really that successful at it. But the twin is an exception because it works perfectly. So this uses Fist and Crap's posh range of lift design. It has the Fist and Crap posh voice, which I'm now calling the Fist and Crap twin voice since it's used on the twin. And it sounds like a posh person, especially the nush mode message. Please do not obstruct the door. So you've got two lifts in the shaft, the lower lift is the green lift, the upper lift is the orange lift, and it is really clearly laid out from in the shaft. But outside of the lifts, for the passengers, they do not know it's a twin lift. And I've actually finally worked out why they do not tell people at all. Because people are so dumb, they don't even understand lifts properly in the first place. And you try to explain to them what a twin lift is, they'd just be really confused. There's no indication at all on these lifts that there is actually twin lifts here. And when people go to the lifts, it's destination dispatch, so they press the button, it tells them what lift to go to. Even though you had just seen someone get in the upper car of the twin lift, doors close, lift goes off then they're directed to the exact same lift and the lift is just there in like 15 seconds doors open there's no one in there the lift could not have gone up a floor full passenger got out and then got back down in that time but despite that people do not notice even though it's blatantly obvious from that it's a twin lift people just don't notice and very occasionally there's a delay where one lift is being held up and the other lift can't move when this happens the lift that's being delayed just opens its doors like nothing's happening and people don't really have a clue really what's going on no one knows it's a twin lift and the only way you can really appreciate Check this is from on top and there's a few interesting things here they have some unknown safety system now as a guest because i was trying to figure out how the safety worked i thought it might be like shaft switches where the lift that's about to open its doors presses a shaft switch to bypass safety for the other lift as it opens its doors that's what i thought would happen but i didn't see any such mechanism meaning the entire system is software controlled and on fizz and Club's website it talks quite a bit about software how their software goes to some military grade special software or something that can't ever go wrong I don't fully trust that. And there's a few other things I've noticed about the fit twin lift, where on a normal lift you have to have mechanical systems set up as well as electronic safety systems. Most lifts use a dual safety system. You have the electronics, uh, which will never do anything at all cause a problem. But at the same time, you've also got the relay system, the safety system, that also stops the lift from like moving if the doors open. But neither of the two systems rely on each other. They're two independent safety systems, meaning it's a dual independent safety system. That's what all lifts have. The Fizz and Crup Twin doesn't. And although their software is all perfect, they say, and all tested to high standards, which is all good, I personally would prefer to also have a relay system protecting it as well. And there isn't, because if you actually look in the shaft, it's got a barcode system to tell its position, but it isn't actually a mechanical switch at trips if the lifts that get too close. So it is software based. So I thought it'd be like a rod on the lower car, and if the upper car gets too close, it has a little switch on the rod, or something just to switch off the system, if ever a thought occurred at going too close, but I do not have this. So you are relying on software here. So then, the safety system does know when you break safety because it will know a door's open which neither of the two lifts have authorised. I don't get how this works, but it does work because both lifts stop when you break safety. And also, safety breaking lifts from the inside, just pulling the doors open, actually stops both lifts as well, which is also interesting. But another thing is that when you safety break lifts on the inside, they go into JU mode, which is German for refinding position. They've got a barcode system going up the entire shaft, so the lifts know their exact position at all times. So the software safety system will not let the lifts get too close. So why do they lose position on safety brake? Surely they know their position at all times? That's a bit alarming. So then, sit back and relax and enjoy this video of the twin.
Oh. 